I cannot thank the people at Just Like Us enough for publishing this research. It puts to rest such an ugly myth, this idea that there's a rift between trans women and lesbians, showing us how said narrative is one invented by bad actors seeking to drive a wedge between LGBT plus folk. It really cannot be overstated how important stuff like this is in combating misinformation, particularly at a time where trans women are being painted as predators by bigots on all fronts. Though before we discuss said research, I just need to give a content warning for the following. Transmisia, lesbomisia, and sexual predation. If you like our work, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon. You can also support us by liking, commenting, and sharing this video on social media. Hey there, my name's Ethel Thurston, she, her, they, them, and it's time to finally lay the myth of lesbian slash trans antagonism to rest. For decades, the assertion that cis lesbians feel threatened by trans women has been a very popular accusation with the gender critical crowd, the gender critical ideology being a form of fascism presenting itself as feminism. Indeed, many men and non lesbians in general have forwarded themselves as a voice for said lesbians, claiming that trans women pressure cis lesbians into situations they are not comfortable with sexually assaulting them. Thankfully, this argument has never been particularly mainstream, or at least it wasn't until November of 2021, when the BBC published an article titled, We're Being Pressured Into Sex by Some Trans Women, which claimed just that. The problem? Well, besides containing research that was so bad to the point of being fraudulent, Their only primary source was a self-confessed serial rapist of lesbians, Lily Cade, a fax the BBC later admitted to knowing about before publishing the article forwarding her as an advocate for lesbian victims of sexual violence. What is there to say but yikes? Who will they promote next? Harvey Weinstein as a voice for victims in the film industry? That is the level of incompetence the BBC displayed on the issue, failing to adequately address the problem at all stages of publishing and editing. By the way, if you're in the UK and wondering why you can't access our video on the matter, it's because the evidence provided hurt the ego of a self-declared trans ally who subsequently filed a legal defamation claim to silence trans voices a claim we are currently fighting. You can still access the script, as well as our earlier stream on the topic, just not the video. Returning to this idea that there's some sort of divide between trans women and cis lesbians, this was recently debunked by research conducted by Just Like Us, a UK-based LGBT plus youth advocacy charity. In a thread posted to Twitter on the 31st of March, 2023, Trans Day of Visibility, they stated, quote, Today we're releasing new independently conducted research from our upcoming report, Positive Futures. End quote. The post included a few graphics containing key statistics, statistics which were expanded in a couple of linked articles, both on their own website and the Gay Times, a UK based LGBT plus media group established in 1984, both of which are where I got the information from. For this video. The survey, which contained answers from 3,695 adults aged 18 to 25, found that a whopping 96% of lesbians stated that they were either supportive or very supportive of trans people, trans women included, compared to 89% of the general LGBT plus population and 69% for the non-LGBT plus population. In fact, lesbians were found to be the highest ranking demographic when it came to supporting trans people, not including trans and non-binary people themselves, for obvious reasons. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen something like this. A 2022 survey carried out by YouGov found that the majority of cis women, 57% in fact, supported trans people being allowed to self-ID, compared to just 43% of cis men. Meanwhile, only 21% of cis women said trans people shouldn't be able to self-ID, compared to 
33% of cis men. Cis women are more likely to support trans rights than cis men, a fact that is completely at odds with the gender-critical narrative that the majority of UK women are afraid of trans people gaining the right to self-ID. Gender-critical fascism lies. It cannot forward itself otherwise. It doesn't speak for the majority of women, it doesn't speak for the majority of lesbians, but it can only force itself to be taken seriously by pretending like it does. That is why research like this is so important, because it exposes said lies for what they are, revealing the true thoughts of both lesbians and women. A fact that is important not only because the gender-critical lies hurt trans people, but because they also harm lesbians. This was expanded upon in the Gay Times article, with Amy Ashenden, a lesbian and the interim CEO of Just Like Us, explaining how such myths have led lesbians to delay coming out. 4%, that's roughly 1 in every 20 lesbians, have stated that the public's perception of them being anti-trans due to the lies propagated by gender-critical fascism has led them to delay coming out a number that rises to 7% among lesbians aged 25 to 34. That is why Amy labels such a myth a, quote, lesphobic trope, end quote, stating rather plainly that it is, quote, rooted in misogynistic ideas of what a woman should be, end quote. In her Gay Times article, Amy elaborates on this, explaining the confusing situation they've been forced into, thanks to the likes of Graham Linehan and Kelly J. Keen Minshew, where the public's perception of the issue is greatly detached from reality, to the point that it is hurting young lesbians. And it's not the fault of trans people, who have been very clear from the start that most lesbians openly support us, it's the fault of the gender-critical crowd, mostly consisting of cis men and heterosexual women, who have forced themselves upon lesbians as an authority, purporting to speak on their behalf. The gender-critical ideology harms UK lesbians. That is an established fact with statistical evidence to back it up. Though it's not the only thing the research has found, only 3% of people who know a trans person said that they are not supportive, compared to 18% of those who do not have a trans person in their lives. Indeed, 74% of people who say they aren't supportive of trans people also stated that they don't know a trans person, meaning support for trans people among friends and family is relatively high, something that is comforting to see. I look forward to reading the rest of their report when it's published and might circle back to it when it is, But outside of that, I'm just happy this myth is finally dead. We now have statistical evidence to point to any time a gender-critical fascist claims that trans people, trans women in particular, are at odds with the lesbian community. Not only is it wrong, with the L overwhelmingly standing with the T, but 96% of lesbians would very much like cis men such as Graham Linehan and heterosexual women like Kelly J. Key Minshew to shut the fuck up and stop talking over them when it comes to trans people. If you appreciate what we do here and want to help out, please consider becoming one of our wonderful patrons who make our work possible. On that note, we'd just like to thank the following people. Matthew Kovac, Gert Van Voorst, Hannah Banghart, Marble Wings, Sosh Daniels, Flynn, and Higgins the Seagull. And for myself, Adita, and Levi, take care now.